So last night before going to bed, I inoculated these peas and beans. And if you watch that video, then you can tell the difference here. It pretty much soaked up the majority of the water. There's still some liquid in there. But you see how each and every individual seed now has a bit of that inoculant on it. Same thing with the beans here. Just wanted to give you a quick peek under this floating row cover. This is where I scattered some mustard green seeds. As you can see, we're getting some nice germination under here. And I've yet to manually water this patch since I put the seed down. Another great thing about these row covers is they allow not just the sunlight, but water to penetrate through. Here we've got another cardone that I transplanted, looking rather healthy. Fava beans are looking great. Back over here on the edge of the hugel culture, this is a society garlic plant. It's off these beautiful violet flowers. The flowers are edible, the leaves are edible. So you can chop up those leaves and flowers, put them in soups, salads, stews. This is really a great plant to get established around your garden or food forest. I've actually got a bunch more of these plants getting going in cups here. Transplant these out pretty soon. The plant itself has a slight aroma of a garlic onion type smell which aids in repelling certain pests in the garden, which is great. And this plant will actually get quite a bit larger, somewhere about two and a half to three feet tall and wide. So I dug up and transplanted a gooseberry plant that was planted right here. It had been in the ground for about two years or so. And I transplanted that right here in front of the original abundant tree kale. This is the mother plant that I've taken all the cuttings from. see here on the bottom leaves where the chickens have come around and had themselves a snack. This plant is looking very healthy. You can see we're starting to push out a bunch of new growth here on the main stock. Also while I was out here yesterday I went ahead and took down the canopy of these fruit trees by another two and a half, three feet or so. You can see evidence of that on the base of each tree here. We've got another storm of brewing. It's good news for us here in Northern California. We could use some more rain. We're pretty much out of the drought for the most part, so that's great. I think it's been about six or seven years since we've been in a pretty severe drought, so it should be a really great growing season next year. You see this fruitless mulberry? I featured this in some of my previous videos. I'm gonna cut this back, major league, probably down to the original stumps and I may take the whole tree out um, it served a great purpose while it's been here but I've got several of these in the yard and I really want to open up the sky and allow more sunlight into this area so I can establish some more edible type shrubs and trees same goes for the pine tree over there one of my neighbors had already expressed that they would probably like to see it go and they said that in a pretty nice way and I agree, it does cast quite a bit of shade. It's only going to get larger, and I could definitely uh, utilize that space to grow some more edible crops. Although these trees look very much dead, they're not. They're alive. I'm going to take my machete and cut some of that dead foliage off. And we're about probably a month or so away from these to start re-emerging with some nice green growth. I really hope I get a fruit set this year. That'd be great. This abundant tree kale here is looking quite ornamental. And just like with the mother plant, it's starting to push out a bunch of new growth on the stalks. This guy here has a huge stock going. Probably going to actually take this one out and replace it with something else. Also, I'm going to be dismantling this original centerpiece here. This uh, really helped me to shape out and design the garden. And at this point, I really am looking forward to a more natural look. So I'm going to be taking these bricks out. I've got a pineapple guava. It's been growing here now for about a year and a half. I'm going to let this take over this spot. Did some rebuilding on the hugel culture mounds. As you can see, I took out 
quite a bit of the purple tree collards in the chicken coop area and I found this works wonderful for rebuilding hugel culture. The squirrely branches really nest themselves together so I'm going to be coating this now with soil and wood chips and it will hold itself together really nice. And a few people have asked me if I've had any mushrooms flush out yet and the answer is no. I'm still waiting for the weather to warm up so I had stated when I originally made the video that it was probably going to take several months up to a year to see the first fruiting bodies start to pop up but if you look close looks like something was scratching around in here you can see there's mycelium all throughout the substrate so it's looking really good I've got a couple trail cams set up out here as well these will do time-lapse or they'll do motion photography or video these are really nice they got night vision and it's blackout infrared so you don't see any light at night runs on eight AA batteries has a couple different modes to program well that's the update for today everybody as always I hope this video finds you and finds you well out in the world and out in your garden planting more abundance in your life See that? She got a slug.